Welcome to Podages, episode 314.5, The Dog Days of Feedback. Humor's Movies Feedback, Japan Stories, and Japan Movies. Recorded November 24th, 2016, in Japan. Podages is your critically nostalgic, analytical tour through the Digimon anime. I'm Ashley McDonald, and I'm joined by my fellow Digi-gnome, Jeff Ruberg. Merry Labor Thanksgiving Day for all the nice children in the world. Um, Terrible. Yeah, it, I'm not usually doing this response thing. Anyway, I just wanted to explain why this episode is different. First of all, we're recording two feedback episodes at once. We're covering both movie episodes for 313, 314. Also, we're recording this from Japan, and it's Thanksgiving here. Also in the U.S. right now? Yeah. Cause, Thanksgiving everywhere. Because it's like almost midnight here. But there is no Thanksgiving in Japan. They have Labor Thanksgiving Day, which is yesterday. Anyway, we're going to talk about some of our Japan trip highlights, and we're also going to talk about reviews of two anime movies that we saw in Japanese in Japan, Your Name and A Silent Voice. So stick around for those. We're going to do our Digimon feedback first, and then we're going to do the Japan trip highlights, and then we're going to talk about the movies. So first off, jumping into first our rejected titles for 313 and 314, and this time I actually picked out what I thought were the best ones, not listing all of them. Wow. So actually you read the ones for 313, the first Tamers movie. I was an adventurer, but then I took a Tamers to the knee, Island of Misfit tie-in films, Bummer Wars, We're the Red Fern Growlmons. <laughs> should have gone with Bummer yeah. Wars. No, we should have gone with We're the Red Fern Growlmons. I, I, mean, the... yeah, I came up with that. I'm pretty sure. What do we actually go with? Uh, oh, the Dog Days of Summer. Right. Yes. That was, that was okay. I don't think most people got the dog joke. Anyway, and for 314, the second one, the train one. Oh, I'm reading it still? Yes. Speed 3, Going Loco, The Little Tamers That Could. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I didn't even notice the little tamers uh, over there. Oh, no. fail. Tamers of the Iron Fortress. Oh, God. I, I'm embarrassed. We're going to keep going through. Um, now on to, this is where we normally in feedback episodes talk about the results of the Padages Fantasy Draft. But we actually already recorded 315, the final Tamers episode, and we cover that there. So stay tuned in the next couple of days for that. Um, and on that note, it just reminded me of something that I meant to put in the notes that I totally forgot to put in, which is the fact that we are also doing two more special things for the final 315 episode. Uh, we're going to have a listener survey where we'll have a bunch of, not too many questions, because it'll probably take a couple minutes to fill out, um, that we hope listeners will do, and so we can improve the podcast for season four. And we also have, we're going to run a t-shirt campaign for the season three logos of Potages. So stay tuned for those. We'll have more details in the 315 episode. We also now on to a question of the week voicemails. So for 313, the question was, would you rather have a dog or a Digimon? So, uh, so first off, we're going to go through social media answers. We also have one voicemail for this one. Um, first off, social media, uh, CC Takato on Twitter said Digimon because duh. Um, oh, I can never pronounce Edgar's actual Twitter handle, but, uh, <laughs> Ix, 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 I'm sorry, Edgar. <laughs> AKA Edgar Redna said Digimon because then I could change the world. Toasty Gamer 96 said a Digimon because Digimon. Sunscrapper said Digimon, even if I have a dog, I'll sell it to buy a Digimon game. That's a little. <laughs> That's mean. Yeah, it's a little mean. <laughs> um, and then on Facebook, Acadia Stevens said, Digimon, you can ride on a Digimon if it's big enough. You can't ride on a dog. Also, Digimon can speak human tongue and dog cannot. Well, you can ride on a dog depending on how big of a human you are. <laughs> yeah, so just, dog just, is. just shrink back in time to be a little baby. Uh, Marlon Marlowe on Tumblr said, Digimon are like kids that you entitle. No, oh my God. This is why recording live is bad, kids. Don't do it. Except when you're recording from Japan. You need to release the episode quickly. Anyway, Marlon Marlowe said, Digimon are like kids that entitle you to destiny. No thanks. I'd rather stay at home with my dog. I need to walk. Yeah, d- dogs are a chore. Digimon give you destiny, though. I don't know. Dogs are a bit of a chore. Um, and Brillon Soup, no, Brillon Sloop on Tumblr had a fairly long response, but I'm going to mention the highlights. They said, as long as I don't have to force my partner and friend to fight, I want a Digimon. If they had to fight, I'd rather have a dog because they wouldn't have to fight. And also, the end, the conclusion of their uh, post. Since I'm a peaceful person, I'd have to go with a dog. For the sheer reason dogs are not made to fight like Digimon are. I would be too nervous of losing my best friend if they were to fight and not survive. It's a fair point. I don't think... Yeah, dog fighting were... is illegal. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I'm going for, actually. 
I'm just saying. Digimon fighting should be illegal too. That's what you oh should be campaigning so for. Okay. And I'm not sure how this is going to work. We'll, we'll hope this works out. We're going to be playing audio from our laptop and recording it with this portable mic we have. That might not work out too well, but we have a voicemail from Kai, which, if you don't remember, is the name of Takato's cousin in the first movie, which I kind of forgot. He's definitely not Davis. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, everyone. It's your righteous boy, Kai, here. Remember me? Most people don't because I'm from a really forgettable movie, man. I'm the Surfer Davis or some joke. Anyways, I'm here to answer this week's gnarly question. Would I rather have a Digimon or a dog? Well, my thing is that I'm a surfer dude, so I really would need to be able to surf on the thing that I choose. Is there like a surfboard Digimon or something? Like Surfermon, Hang Tenmon, Kawabungamon? If there is, I would pick that. Nothing against dogs, I love them, but you can't really surf on them, man. And I know that from experience. So yeah, dogs aren't my thing. My thing is waves, brah. And saying surfer slag like Primo, Tubular, and Mondo Cool. Anyways, I gotta bail out and catch the next big surf. See you on the tail slide, pod, did you bros? <laughs> Watching Ashley try to not break out in laughter the whole time. It was great. I love Kai slash definitely not Davis. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. And I, th- I think the best reason that you can you can surf on Digimon and not dogs. There has, yeah, there has to be a surfing Digimon. I mean, there's Rinkmon. Which is basically surfing on ice. Yeah. And now onto the voicemail answers for the second feedback episode, which got a lot fewer responses, but I guess it wasn't as good of a question. So the question was, who do you think Parisimon should have possessed and what would they do? Because I think we were all kind of disappointed in Rika being possessed and it causing her to sing, of all things. But, um, so Ancient Irismon, aka Made for Guest of Lost in Translationmon, said, Terriermon, how terrifying would the sass bundog be? I would love to see that. Sam Krieger of the Moncast on Twitter said, Takato, shift focus towards Henry Rika a bit and give us another battle with Megijumon. Ooh, that would be cool. Like, possess, have Takato mm. be possessed and then cause Megijumon. Yes. Mm. Do it. Because mm. that's at least a character who, like, they clearly showed having a dark side. Rika's dark side being singing, like, w- It's not okay? supposed to be her dark side. No, not a dark side, but it's like her ultimate desire. You know, like, yeah, it's interesting it's to, like, like, her ultimate yeah. sadness. I, I sure I guess. Um and Zeke Mervin on Facebook said Yamaki because he's part of the government. As for Tamers, Rika is still a good choice after all, that's how we got to see the song. Mm, Yamaki. Did you want to see that song? It <laughs> <laughs> hey, wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. But Yamaki, <laughs> hmm. I want to know all of Yamaki's motivations for things. That's true. So yeah. you know, if there were is time travel, and then Yamaki hates Digimon because he had been gotten possessed by a Parisimon back in the day, and that's fine. I'll a time that. travel? Why time travel? All things. <laughs> it's, got, it's got to be time travel. Um, so now on to comments. So we don't, we didn't have any comments that I wanted to highlight and talk about from episode 313. But we did have a couple, we had one comment with a couple things I wanted to talk about from 314 from Ember Moto on the forum. And so this first bit, they mentioned why is Takato even, sorry, they mentioned, why does Takato even bother to hide him anyway? Talking about Gilmon. Shouldn't everyone know who they are by now thanks to the D-Reaper incident? The Tamers and the Digimon involved in the D-Reaper incident should be famous, as they were also on TV saving Japan. And naked. Anyway, that's my own comment. Little but <laughs> there should be no reason to have to hide the Digimon. So, I, I thought it was worth bringing up, because I feel like it's a trend we've seen in Try 2, that's like, well, you know, like the kids save the world in adventure. Why are they, like, famous now or whatever? And I just wanted to bring it up, because I th- I think I'm starting to see a pattern here that I think is not really ever brought up in the, this, this kind of media, which is that I think there's an underlying assumption that kids need to have their, you know, like, their private not famous life. You know what I mean? That, like, mm-hmm. it's just assumed, like, of course, once they save the world, there will be entities that are trying to keep them from becoming world famous and, like, saviors who are truly like royalty or whatever. And that's usually unaddressed by the narrative, so we're always left with, like, question of, like, wait, aren't they famous? Um, but that I think... Maybe it's a cultural thing. Maybe in Japan it's just assumed, like, yeah, of course the number one thing is your privacy and your ability to leave a normal, lead a normal everyday life. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that's just my thought. And so the next, the next bit of this comment that I want to talk about was, Emmermoto said, Ryo's entrance in this movie makes no sense. He appears from the digital field in their sky, and in the Japanese version it is made clear that he came through it. So does this mean that Ryo and Cyberjumon have gone back to living in the digital world for some unknown reason? Or were they living in the digital world because they were called to help with the problem? 
Why was Imma invited to the party yet, but not I and Mako? They are the only tambers not present. Susie is there, so it shouldn't have anything to do with age. And I think those, oh. those, are, both, those are both really good points. Um, I didn't even notice. <laughs> yeah, I didn't notice Ayamako aren't there. That's that's disappointing because they're totally the life of the party. They should have been carried. Oh my gosh. No, <laughs> no it's, just, it's disappointing because it's like, yeah, the, the relationship with Iman is a fascinating thing to see explored and it's not explored there. I mean, it makes sense that Ayamako were not invited. If... Ooh, it's like a too, too mature party. Although they mentioned that Susie was there, so it's not an age no. thing. I mean, if we assume, if you assume that Rika and the others eventually hung out with Ayamako after Tamers, then it doesn't make sense. But as it currently is, they're not currently friends with Ayamako. That's weird for him not invite his um, friend owner Ooh, people. You don't just get, I don't get you don't, you don't invited. You get plus twos to yeah, you don't birthday get parties. Plus twos to birthday parties. It's not a thing. You should. Um, the other the other comment about Rio and Savageman implied to come from the digital world. I I guess I totally missed in the English version, and if it's in the Japanese version, maybe more explicit like that. That that's that's like a. Then why are they scared of going to the digital world if they were just going to yeah, meet up with no, Rio again? No, it doesn't again? doesn't make any. Oh well, that that's why they're scared because they're like, oh no, we're no, not Rio. Rio again. No, I it's <laughs> that's definitely a weirdness. Anyway, um, and the last comment from Ember Moto that I went to highlight was they just said, "I love how Jerry has adopted Kalima." Yes, which yes. agreed, agreed. Okay, so now we are done with Digimon comments for the Tamers movies. I guess that that's the the end of feedback for Tamers as a season. By Tamers. Uh, well, we're as a listener, they haven't gotten to our final episode yet. But we are, in general, I just want to mention that we're thinking of shaking up the f- the formula for feedback episodes in next season. I think a lot of people, you can tell by listener numbers that a lot of people didn't listen to feedback episodes, which is kind of the point. We didn't want to make them required if you want to listen to just the main episodes. But I think we also kind of made them really bloated and really long and hard to listen to. So, not hard to listen to, but like, you know, I think they should be just focusing on the feedback. Anyway, things that might change in the future. Anyway... <laughs> Now we're moving on to heads of our Japan trip because we're in Japan. So I broke this up in a couple of different sections. The first one is Digimon highlights in Japan. Um, in general, this trip, we really haven't been focusing on Digimon things. Last year when we came to just Tokyo for a week, we really went and saw a bunch of lots of different anime sites and specifically Digimon sites. This year we are spending, we spent two weeks. We're at near the end of our two weeks and we went, we only spent three days in Tokyo, most of the time in other cities and really because of that, most of the Digimon sites are in Tokyo, and we didn't do any. We saw Tokyo Tower, but anyway, we haven't really been, this trip has not been focusing on things like Digimon sites. So we do have a couple things that were Digimon related that we ran into over the course of the trip. Um, first was we, we saw the um, Atmon card ass machines, the the card game gachapon things where you can put in 100 yen coin and get a pack of booster cards for new Atmon cards. For some card game, who knows? I don't yeah, know. I actually don't know much about that card game, but I got a bunch of Atmon cards like, for like yeah, $5. A ton of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, a ton of them was $5. It was like the uh-huh. cost of a single booster pack in I America. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there was also the arcade game, which we were confused and thought used those card ass cards, but it's not those. It's a totally different set of cards. They're just for the machine. <laughs> And really, we could have researched this in advance. I should have researched in advance. I think it's all explained in the V-Jump issues, which I've skimmed through. Um, but I figured it'd just be intuitive once I got there. And, um, anyway, the card, the arcade game, the Atmar arcade game, Ooh. it's, um, not very good. The visuals are not very, the visuals are pretty bad. The aesthetic design is fine, but like the, the resolution is really low. It's really big polygons. They put it next to the, the Pokemon <sighs> game. That just, yeah, the Pokemon game that is was like, mean. Pokemon, I forget what the Pokemon game is called exactly, but the, yeah, the, I think it must be newish because it looked newish. Um, like the visual design on that is super pretty, like high resolution. The arcade machine itself has a snazzy little Pokemon, Pokeball joystick, which I don't know if it's new, but at least, you know, looked appealing. Maybe it's old by Japanese standards. Maybe people have seen that around in arcades for decades, but it definitely looked cooler than the app on one, which the main feature of the Atmon arcade game is a flat, uh, table, which you can put cards into to do the, um, app fusion uh, yeah you do you like move the cards around to activate fusion to app, app, activate links which then are either fusion or links anyway and it's just a silly gimmick really like you put cards down and then like do a preset motion maybe there's more to it later in the arcade game um we didn't i didn't buy the card let's actually save your progress to it and yeah try to progress in it and the battles i did play were kind of boring and dull and i don't know looking. um yeah it looked it was pretty repetitive and I don't know how deep it gets, but 
it also a bit made me a little bit um, skeptical of the Atmon thing as a whole, because it seems like the whole premise of the series, having played that and looked at the card game and the, the 3DS game and stuff, it seems like the premise of the franchise is that you need to know which Atmon link together to make Apgata your fusions, and the way you get that information is by watching the TV show, and it's like, uh, I, don't, I don't know, whatever, we'll see how the show and everything keeps coming out, but whatever. The next thing we encountered was the uh, Daily Yamazaki promotion, which is a kumbini chain here, which happened to be running a Digimon Adventure Tribe promotion while in the weeks that we were here. And it was basically just a, like, you buy two items in a set of things, and they give you a Digimon Tri sticker. So there are two, three different stickers, and we got six random snacks to get those. They look nice stickers, but they're just stickers. They're just stickers. <laughs> we'll probably we had to gamify it so that our friend could find all the, the items we could possibly right. buy. We were worried at first because it was like, it's a list online of the different items. We're like, oh no, it's hard to match up where these are in the store. But then we noticed they had little cards in front of all the items that had the Digimon Tri thing on them. So we did that and got a bunch of random snacks we haven't even finished. But we'll probably have some of those stickers in the Tri giveaway because we don't have much of a use for them. Um, the only other thing that we ran across in Kobe a... It was Terriermon. Oh, we were Patamon. Yeah, it was totally Terriermon. <laughs> it was totally Terriermon. Terriermon uh, UFO crane prize that we tried one game of. And then I mean, I only tried one game because I knew I couldn't actually carry it back. And we almost almost like picked up Terriermon. He didn't fall out. Yeah, though. Jeff actually did better than I thought he would. <laughs> we tried um, not to get the item. Yep. And so now we're going to... So we went on this trip with two of our friends, and we're going to invite one of them on now to talk about the... We invited both of them on, but one of them yeah. <laughs> doesn't want to. Johnny G doesn't want to be on the podcast. <laughs> Johnny G. But we're going to have another friend. What is he going by? We. <laughs> yeah. I think he's going by Giles. Giles. Gi- Giles. Either Giles or Miles. And yeah, we're going to talk about our highlights from each area. So now we're back with friend of the show, Miles. Hey. And travel companion, one of two. Part two, travel companion, Johnny G did not want to be on the podcast because <laughs> he wanted to protect his identity. <laughs> Whereas Miles here is under our witness protection program. So yeah. Safe. Also, not the same Miles from the last podcast, but anyway. So we're going to talk about the highlights of our trip. We're splitting us up into the three main areas that we visited. So the like, general layout, we started in Hokkaido and then moved south, and we're near the end. We have 1.5 more cities to go to, but the ones we've been to so far are mainly stuff around Sapporo. Then we went to Tokyo, did stuff in Tokyo, and then we went to a lot of different places around the general Kyoto area. Um, Is so, it not just called Kansai? I guess you could call it Kansai, yeah, but, like, I'm just thinking about the, the three city areas. Um, anyway, so, yeah, sure, let's call it, let's call it, but it's weird to be like, okay, Hokkaido, Tokyo, and Kansai, but I guess we can call it that. Hokkaido's a region. Yeah. Right, but Tokyo's... Tokyo is, is Tokyo a city. I mean, Tokyo's it's also a, a, a prefecture. Well, Isn't anyway. it? No, it's not. It's not. Y'all prefecture. question my authority. <laughs> anyway, uh, so... So in Sapporo, we went to the Sapporo Beer Garden, Mount Moiwa, which is the mountain right next to... Is it inside the city? I'm pretty sure it was inside the city. We took a ropeway inside of the mm, city. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how it's... the city is. But anyway, then we also went to Noboribetsu and Hell's Valley there, and three out of four of us went to the onsen. <laughs> and yeah, so Ashley, what was your favorite thing in the Sapporo area slash Hokkaido? Hell's Valley, because the earth... Made farts. <laughs> it smelled so bad. Wow. Yes, yeah, sulfur. What do you call it? sulfur volcano? Not the volcano. Sulfur. It was volcanic. <laughs> what is the name for that? I don't know. It looked cool. The name for what? Uh, there, I mean, there was sulfur geyser. No, it wasn't a geyser. Was I mean, it was geothermal. Geyser. Mm, geothermal. And there was there was sulfuric deposits, but uh, there weren't any geysers. That's what they it call was me a in high geyser. School. It was one geyser. Oh, it wasn't a geyser. It was a different type of water propagation, but it was not a geyser. <laughs> it was a girlser. It was <laughs> like... So, Miles, what was Fine your favorite enough. thing in the Sapporo area? Uh, I also liked uh, the the uh, geothermal area. Mostly, I liked the hiking around there, because it was the first time that we had been out in nature nature, uh, like in a relatively rural area. Um, and I thought that was really neat to see that other side of Japan that isn't talked about as much in the West. Um, okay. That's an answer. I disagree. I disagree. <gasps> I disagree. A- M rating. Right 
Um, uh, my my favorite thing was the onsen, which we went to. Oh, I forget the name of the Jesus. <laughs> the uh, hotel we went to, but it's basically like right on. So it was, I was at Nobori Betsu, and it was like the hotel. It's like if you go to the main Hell's Valley, um, most touristy part of it before you actually get on the hike, it was like the hotel that was visible from there and had springs that overlooked the Hell's Valley itself. And uh, yeah, onsen is something you hear a lot about in anime and just in things recommended for going to Japan a lot, but was uh, something I was, I was be really weird to do, but was much more uh, not as bad as I thought it'd be. Ashley didn't have such no. a great experience because Ashley went in alone and had to figure it out on her own. This is what happens when you travel with three dudes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Johnny. <laughs> yes, I went in with Johnny G. <laughs> Johnny G. Oh, yeah, he did. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Um... <laughs> But it's it's weird. It, it's it sounds. But it's like it's, it's weird to be like. I, I'm a person who's generally very, um, you know, like self conscious. Squeamish. Not squeamish. No. Squeamish. Self conscious. Uh, maybe that's a Around different thing that you humors. also have. <laughs> anyway, um, and so you know, just like, just like going to the other extreme, like uh, it's it's also weird to be like you put all your stuff in lockers, and then when you have to go into the spring, you just have a towel. That's all you have. And you have, like, locker keys on your arms or whatever. But, like, it's just, like, this towel is all that I am. And, like, sitting in the tub and having the towel on your head. And you're just, like, everything I am is, like, a part of me right now. Uh, it's a weird feeling. I have to say, the only thing that made me feel better was that you told me I couldn't drop the towel in the thing. But I'm pretty sure I let the corners touch accidentally. But there was definitely a lady who, like, dropped it in there fully and then just rang it out. And <gasps> she was... You're supposed to ring it outside the thing. Yeah, I know. And, you know, like, the gods didn't come kill her. So I thought it well, would not, be not, okay. Now you're publicly <laughs> shaming she her. rang it. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Yes. Miles, um, his primary currency is bad puns. Yes. I am I am rich beyond measure. <laughs> uh, okay, so now the next area was Tokyo, and what did we do in Tokyo? We went to the Wait, robot. Are, are, co- sorry, aren't we doing least oh, favorite, right, right. bro? Yeah. Least favorite. Okay. Oh, least yeah, favorite. Yeah. What was your least favorite thing in soccer? Well, well onsen. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. Nice transition there. Just facts. <laughs> uh, Miles, what was your least favorite thing? Hmm. That's a good question. I love all my children. I thought that the 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 Sapporo beer garden was a little yeah over- overrated. Was like we went pretty, it we went sort of far out of our way uh, on foot from downtown Sapporo to get there. Uh, so it was a bit of a schlep, and there wasn't really there much... wasn't much going on. Even the those of us in our group who Johnny do drink jo- Johnny G <laughs> didn't even get to try samples at. The uh, uh, at the uh, Sapporo Beer Factory because they were closed for that day. Yeah, so they, they generally have a big uh, beer sampling thing, which people I think generally really like, and that was closed for the day. So all there was was a little museum area that we couldn't uh, didn't try to understand most. I think there was English stuff. We didn't even try. To no, read. there was very little English. I tried to read things in Japanese and could only understand dates because they were being written in <laughs> Arabic numerals. Jeff was like. <laughs> In the States, some guy's name, something, something, <laughs> America. dates. No, <laughs> America. Poss- possibly some guy's name, because actually <laughs> distinguishing between words I don't know and names is really hard at this point. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I was going to say stop for a beer garden, because it was like, I thought there was going to be stuff there aside from the actual tasting of beer and stuff, and yeah, and the three of us are on this podcast now don't drink beer, so... I thought it would be an like, interesting, like, nice garden and stuff, and it was like, okay. I mean, not food there, and it was decent food, it was a... um. What's it called when you? Oh, I think it's called yakiniku in Japan, where you grill stuff on the. Oh yeah. And that was that was kind of cool. That but was fun. It didn't require being at Sapporo Beer Garden. For mm. What is? <laughs> o- honorable mention in Sapporo was the huge, beautiful underground walkway. I think there's something like for for I think it's Japan's third largest city. Uh, but it still didn't feel particularly large, uh, maybe because it didn't have a huge surrounding metro area. Also because um, half people were mole people living underground. In- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sapporo no, is but, actually but in two the, cities. <laughs> in the same way that uh, the Twin Cities in Minnesota have tons of skyways, uh, Sapporo has something like 40, 50 blocks of underground walkways, which were huge and wide and had a lot of sunlight from uh, from above and were pretty gorgeous and very useful. The only good thing about those walkways was that they had an art exhibit while we were there that was like in the sides of one of them. And one of the big art, one of the things that was an art exhibit was a, just like a big manga sound effect. I forget which one it was. I have a picture of it. And it's just like, it's like the equivalent of like, like doom in English. So it's just like mm-hmm. big sound effect. And it's like 3D and looks cool. Anyway. 
That's the only thing that's good about Walmart. Hate is gonna hate. Hate is gonna hate, hate, hate. Hey, oh no, oh no, we're copyright infringement. So now into Tokyo. So in Tokyo, Tokyo, we did the robot restaurant, Save Your Groans, robot restaurant, Akihabara, uh, then Miles split off and did the diet building tour. I did, I did tour the and national diet. And while you were doing that, uh, the rest of us did the Icho Namiki, uh, street, Avenue, Avenue um, Tokyo Tower, uh, Kagaya Izakaya, and the next day, Miles went off to do other stuff. And those of us still in Tokyo did the Tsukiji Fish Market, Imperial Palace, Okonomiyaki, met one of our friends on the internet, James, and saw your name. So, Ashley, what was your favorite thing in Tokyo? Kagaya Izakaya, man! <laughs> yes! <laughs> we became friends with Japanese business people for like an hour. <laughs> so we should explain, an Izakaya <laughs> is just a Japanese pub-ish? Not really a pub, but just like a, like a place where people drink. It t- I think it tends to be small plate right, small. restaurant with uh, good like liquor and beer options. Yeah, like people go there to drink, but also to eat food in like a small, intimate environment. Um, there are lots of them, and this neighborhood this place was in has lots of them, and this one we found from a article on the Tofugu blog that raved about it, and it's basically a wackiest of wacky things. So it's, wacky. It's, it's, it's hard. We don't want to spoil the experience by explaining all the wackiness, um, but it is a... Look, you talk to <laughs> Jeff's crotch. That's all you really need to the, know. The, the, basically, the, like, the server is... Um, it's like half entertainment show, half... Uh, food. I mean, you do get food, but you also have to like sing to order your meal. The food he, was some of the best food we got too. Yeah, though. he dresses a frog. I mean, it's he it's full of frog. it's full of wackiness. Um, I would do really this for you if you ever visited me. <laughs> uh, and my Talk to his crotch and dresses a frog. <laughs> I mean, I do that normally. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it, I, it was also it's also my favorite thing that for we did in Tokyo, and it was really great. Um, I I don't know if it's a one time thing or not. Like I I think it has to be one time thing. Like I don't think you can go back to it. But it seemed like the people who the Japanese people who were there knew the way around a bit. Maybe they I think just... you have to go with you can yeah, go, go multiple with, times, with but you people. have to go with different people who haven't been there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. What did um, Miles do in Kanazawa that was so <sighs> fun? I had an absolutely wonderful sushi meal. Maybe the best sushi that I've ever had uh, at like a little 10 person uh, sushi bar. And that was uh, the best food experience of this trip, full of good food experiences. So I, that's nothing to laugh at. And then as far as, as Tokyo, I, my favorite part was either uh, Akihabara's uh, arcades, which we had been to last year, uh, but there were, even based on my expectations from there, and I assume even in the same building, there were just so many new games and, like, a couple new genres uh, that I were just so ridiculous or fun. Like, I played a game where it was centered around wrestling horned beetles, and I beat the other horned beetle in a wrestling match, and so I got to go bug hunting, and then when I caught a super, super rare horned beetle, it printed it out for me, so now I have that, and I'll carry it around in my wallet. Uh, I have a, a trading card that I can, when I come back to Japan, I can bat, put it back in one of those machines and battle with that beetle for the rest of my life. So that's that's something that I'll be with. Like beetle connection? Yeah, LLBC. Hmm. Although the game itself, I mean, the printing out is novel, but the game itself is just, you just described Pokemon. I mean, the printing out was also not novel. <laughs> right. I mean, it's that, novel to us, but like yeah. to there, that was, that was like the Digimon card, the, the Atmon arcade machine did that too. And we assume it's a mechanic that's been around for a while, but. Hmm. Uh, the diet building was also really cool. And my tour guides there were very nice. Did they have Atkins? Ha 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 ha. Oh. Moving on. Di- <laughs> moving on. Uh, <laughs> But the when when I was asking about Japanese federal redistricting uh, policies, that sort of did not quite make it across the linguistic barrier. Wow, that's surprising. I just want to know they have they have very two different district types in two different houses and decennial censuses, and I want to know how it works. But I did not find out there, and I will have to find out in Wikipedia. <laughs> So, actually, what was your least favorite thing in Tokyo? Robot restaurant. Yeah. I will preface this. Can we can all raise our hand if we're going to pick a robot restaurant? Restaurant. I'm raising my hand. We're raising okay. Our Miles, hand. So Miles is we, raising his hand. We all, this, this, what, how would you describe, what is the robot restaurant? Roboto, roboto, 
awesome. It's a ridiculous parade in a very, very tiny room. Yeah, yeah, parade, yeah. But it's... Uh, hmm. It that is... That is very, very... It's all the weird stereotypes that you would have of Japan, that but having no cultural relevance. Like, they're and just I think it's even worse than that, because it's disconnected. I would say it's a disconnected. It's it's, Wait, it's, it's grandiose and flashy, and it's a bunch. They're not enough robots for them to call it. <laughs> yes, uh, robot <laughs> restaurant. The robots are not serving me food either. It's not a restaurant. It's like th- there is a like, place where you can get food beforehand, and then you can like. It's all like happy American food. food. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's also yeah. It's, you said it's not connected because it's not like it's. They took the weirdness of Japan and like made it more weird. It's like they made they like, complete. It's like it feels completely artificial to just be the most extreme version of anything you could think of, and it's just like oh, it's. Just... And the people we went to like the latest showing, which was like a little before ten p.m., and just the crowd was just like full of awful tourists. Well, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, it's tourists who were like it was so clearly like ninety percent American, and it's like ugh, we're in this thing in Japan. And it's like. No, but, like, they handed out lights at one point, and a guy in the front row just, like, dropped uh, his as, like, the Asian lady, the he's Japanese He's, like, bent lady. down to pick it up yeah, for me. Yeah, and he's like, oh, no, like, super exaggerated. And she was like, it's okay, like, here you go. And I'm like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think he dropped it twice, too. So, oh, like, what a yeah. jerk. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and like, like in Japan, there there's, like, this, like, there's... There aren't really public trash cans, and people are just expected to carry their trash home and throw it at home, and you have to, like, pay per, uh, like, whatever bag of trash you use and stuff. But, like, mm-hmm. there's it's so societally ingrained that everyone does it, and the streets are super clean. Mm-hmm. And the one place where you saw the most trash was right outside this restaurant. Yes. Because it's just, like, full of Americans who were just, like... Drunk Americans. I can do whatever I want here, and uh, it's... It was literally the worst. And it's it's upsetting to me because we basically went to it Oh, my... we're putting me on blast. Oh, wow. yeah. I'm not, not afraid to do this. One of my coworkers went to Tokyo and said this this was the best thing that he did in Tokyo. And I was skeptical because I was like, this does not seem like it Wait, should be we, the best we, we'd thing. We actually, we'd passed it last year and been like, that was like a silly thing. We're not going to be like, that just seems silly. And then like when you said that it was the best thing he did, we're like, okay, I guess it's so silly that it's pretty awesome. Let's do it this time. Yeah. And... So like, he was here for a week. So we were just like, all right, well, I guess we should try. And then it was, it was bad. Don't <laughs> go to the robot restaurant. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, I feel like it's a hard thing to like, I feel like if I heard this story, I'd be like, I'm so curious how bad it is. No, but, it's no, not, it's, it's not, not funny worth- bad. It's low. It's, it's clearly the, the people performing are, are talented. But and there's the, talent, there's talent in the design, right? And there yeah. are some like talented bits in and the music and... or the choreography. But overall, the show is just put together so tastelessly, and so and not just the show, but like the whole restaurant, the whole thing. And it's also very much even once you're in and have paid for this very expensive ticket, uh, you you are subject to a waiting room where they try to sell you food. And then in between the three 10 to 15 minute acts of the show, there are 10 to 15 minute periods where they roll out drink and food carts and try and get you to buy more. Um, and, uh, then it's even on departure, it, it takes place in a basement level. So even on departure, when you're most sick of it and ready to leave, <laughs> it takes several minutes to escape that hellhole. <laughs> But but Miles, you won free popcorn. Yeah, the only good thing is I you did. Won some I did. Pop- I did win. It, it wasn't popcorn. good popcorn. It had caramel. It was it. shitty burnt caramel popcorn. <laughs> oh boy! It was really. It was really. Bad. But that was a third. Uh, out of the four uh, Japan uh, centered uh, raffles that we have taken part in, we have won three of them. So <laughs> we're, we're doing that's, pretty hot. I, I, you're selectively forgetting the ones in the Digimon Cafe last year. Oh, that's oh, true. Oh, there were ones yeah. that you didn't win? Oh. Uh, also, so like, I guess that makes it five. My, my condolences. Also, like, there were things that were, there was the things that were going on that we didn't understand what was happening. Yeah. Like the pictures or something. Uh-huh. We had to, like, pick out the... After yeah. you had, after oh, you had that oh I remember out. that, yeah. No, I think there were other stuff, too. Oh. Maybe, maybe, maybe that is what I'm thinking of. I think that's what you're thinking of. Anyway. Anyway, robot also- restaurant, f*** <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even if you thought there was some iota of redemption 
for the robot restaurant, it's definitely not worth the like minimum sixty dollars you're gonna pay not, for a ticket. Not worth your not worth your time going out of your way <laughs> to the sleazy like few blocks of the neighborhood that are full of like people trying like talking to you in in English and trying to like get you to go to their club. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or like trash on the ground or annoying jingles. So Ugh. not worth it. I had that jingle stuck in my head for a couple of days, and it's a good jingle. But uh, it's a bad restaurant. Mm. <laughs> it's a decent jingle. It's also, a catchy jingle. I applaud. I applaud the naming of the restaurant for choosing something that doesn't sound completely like an English a place just for English people speak English in Japan. It sounds like it's like it both works in Japanese and English. Robot, robot, song. It's clearly meant as a place like. Oh, I mean, All right, let's no, let's, move, let's, on. Move, on, let's, let's move, move on. Let's move on. This, this more positive bathroom. thoughts. Okay, and the next area we went to, this one was hard to really break down because we spent the, those uh, first two, Sapporo and Tokyo, was the first like six days or so. Yeah, it's like and three days each. Basically, a weekend plus since that has been things in the general Kansai area, uh, generally around Kyoto. Um, we, Ashley and I started off, Ashley and I and Johnny G, on our, on our way to Kyoto, went and stopped, met a friend from the internet at, and near Nagoya. Then we went to, Kyoto Station. From the oh yeah, yeah he's been on the podcast. <laughs> Friend of the show. Friend of the show game. Um, I keep forgetting who we have to use pseudonyms for. Um, anyway, yes. So, he's a digi noob. <laughs> so then we went to the uh, ramen alley in the Kyoto Station. And then we went to the deer in Nara. And yeah, with some deer in Nara. We went through a bunch of alleys in Kyoto. We got dumplings in Kyoto. We stayed in the Nine Hours Capsule Hotel. Mm. Um, we went to a hike along the Fuchu, well, no, Fukuchiyama Railroad, old railroad tracks. There's a hike that you can go through and go through several tunnels along the old railroad tracks. We went and did conveyor belt sushi in Osaka. We went to the Sagano Bamboo Forest, the Fushimi Inari Shrine, the shrine with 10,000 gates. Um, went to the Shorin Inn Temple in Kyoto at night, lit up, went to Himeji Castle, went to Kobe and ate Kobe beef, and today we went to Hiroshima and did the Miyajima Shrine Island area. So, Ashley, what was your favorite thing in the Kyoto area? Man. The problem is we did so many uh, things in this category. Somewhere tie between Deer Nara and Railroad Hike. Um, what about those things, man? So why are they talking? Um, oh, it's just hard to choose, man. The deer were fun. We took some fun, ridiculous pictures. They bow to you, and you feed them, and you can pet them, take some ridiculous selfies with them. And they bite you. They bite their ear clothes. It's fun. <laughs> well, you should also they give out their vendors with little pancake things. Not pancakes, but like little crack- cracker thingies that they eat. Yes. And you can feed to them. But they also bug you and don't know what they just start eating your clothes. And They're like, "Come on, <laughs> give it to me." Um, then the railroad hike was really fun because it was really pretty. It was near a river, which we illegally hopped a fence to get closer to. <laughs> I don't think it's illegal. It just said caution. I did not. Oh, that's true, Miles. Miles did not. Miles Johnny is G. not culpable. Johnny G was all like, "We can do it." <laughs> <laughs> I sat and read some Shonen Jump in the river. Yeah. It was also really fun to be in the middle of tunnels. Why is there a siren? Well, there, aren't, dad, there aren't any sirens in Japan. Uh, you know, my favorite Japan. thing was everybody being afraid that we almost died in an earthquake, except that we didn't. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was that was a little disconcerting because it happened while we were in Kyoto, and the day before... There was a big sign outside the Kyoto train station that was basically like talking about precautions that you should be aware of in case of an earthquake. And I saw the sign and just saw the words earthquake, like the limited things I can recognize in kanji, and was like, guys, I think we should stop. I think it might have been an earthquake. And he's like, Bzzz. and then we looked at the sign. I was like, okay, never mind. It's it's not not something we need to be worried about. To and be fair, we're morning, not con- we are not unconcerned about Japanese life. We are. <laughs> Yeah. Concerned about Jeff's ability to skim kanji yes. on a LED screen. So we we did not just like be like, oh, whatever. It's just about general earthquakes. We looked it up online, and it said there was an earthquake in Argentina, and we were like, that's not Japan. <laughs> like, yeah. So then the next day, we woke up and found out there there had been an earthquake, and that everyone was concerned about. It, I, last I checked, yeah, it didn't, it wouldn't even feel it in Kyoto. It affected things more along the eastern coast. And I think the full extent of it in terms of damages was a single woman getting hurt from things from her, like, 
but but, but but Jeff was temporarily paralyzed by internet. <laughs> I was not paralyzed. Ter- paralyzed by internet searching fear, telling us we should not leave the hostel. It was lest oh. lest we need might need to be evacuated for a nuclear oh. meltdown. <laughs> I thought it was not a good idea to go several hours out of the hostel in case we... Because when, when the Fukushima disaster happened five years ago, all everyone who was a foreigner in Japan had to be evacuated from the country. And this was in the same area, and there was danger of the, the nuclear sites going through something again. And there was a tsunami alert for several hours afterwards, but the tsunami caused, like, a meter high of water instead of the, like you know, 10 meters high from the disaster five years ago, whatever. It's so. like it was a magnitude and a half less or something. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that is not neither a highlight, a favorite, or least favorite. Anyway, it's fun being in the middle of dark tunnels. Yeah. That used to have railroads. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was fun because the, the tunnels were, they weren't straight, so they, you couldn't see a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and so there were just periods where it was entirely pitch black. And yeah, I think we tried to be cool and walk through it without using a light. We were just relying on other people who were passing us or who were in front of us. But then there was a point in the second tunnel, which is the longest one, where nobody was near us. And we tried not to do it. And we were just like, oh, God, it's just, you can't see anything. <laughs> so it's you, just dark. So you said this after we did it, and I didn't know you had that intention of doing without because oh. I, I wasn't i mean i at, i was definitely trying <laughs> oh yeah totally i mean i apparently <clears throat> ended up not doing it until that moment when i was doing it and you had uh gone through a similar thought process <laughs> but anyway the thing that i found most cool about that uh railroad thing and that the under the dark complete pitch black tunnels is that it is very similar to an episode of jojo's Bizarre adventure a recent episode <laughs> and where they're going through a tunnel and there's a, a door in the side of the tunnel and they're like what's that and they look back and stuff happens but there were these little al- alcoves, 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 alcoves in the tunnel that we would find in the pitch black darkness and be like, what is this? Oh my God, it's a room. No, it's not a room. Okay. It's okay. We're not going to get killed. It's, it's from the Arabic, the cove. You're from the cove. Um, <laughs> so Malz, cove. Malz was your favorite thing in Kyoto area. Kansai. I don't think all in Kansai though. Maybe. It was probably just in general how Kyoto served as a very interesting counterpoint to Tokyo, uh, where Tokyo ideas are not favorite things. Well. Is uh, <laughs> so I guess is uh, epitomized by the alleyways and sort of l- shorter construction of Kyoto in general, and the plethora of shrines and temples to the point at which we felt overwhelmed. Uh, with, uh, with choice of which ones to go to or see, uh, during a particular day or night, which, which is fantastic. Um, uh, so juxta, just like the, the, the contrast between coming from this very tall city that has a lot of, of embassies, has many, 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 many distinct neighborhoods that are all huge, um, to a city that also has distinct neighborhoods, but has a smaller number of, like, commercial centers. And even within those, there aren't as many tall buildings. There's maybe a little more nature through the shrines, through the rivers. Um, and uh, it all in all felt maybe a little more touristy, but also a little older. Uh, and that was really neat. Mm. Yeah. I think my favorite thing, I, guess, I think my favorite thing would be the Fukuchima, Fukuchiyama railroad hike. Um, it was just really tranquil and, you know, like a lot of things we've gone to have been tourist traps. I mean, we are tourists, obviously. So, um, like the Sagano Bamboo Forest was similarly kind of, oh, it was, 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 it was, was so bad. No, it, 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 I feel like that forest is a really pretty thing, but it's like mobbed with people when we went at least. So it was just like, you see some bamboo and just tons of people and like struggling to get through and see this. And like, if you're walking in alone, it'd probably be really pretty, but. It really doesn't yeah. help that they allow cars to be driven through that mass of people. Mm, and, I don't, yeah, cars and also rickshaws. Yeah. Which, oh man, the worst was when they were like, there was a, there were a couple of rickshaws I went through and the first one just had this guy who just looked like a tech bro with a, with a phone taking pictures while he was like being like carried on this throne through this mob of people. And I was like, <laughs> wow, this is like. San Francisco everything culture. Everything wrong with everything. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, but the Fukushima Railroad, it, it was just like, we were like almost completely alone when that time we hopped the fence and went down the, into like, sit by the 
actually like by the creek or river or whatever. It was really tranquil and nice, and I could just sit and eat my melon pan. And <laughs> um, it's the yeah. life. Oh no, the conveni- convenience are the best. Are the best, my favorite thing in every in city. Every region. <laughs> Specifically I mean, 7 Eleven. Oh my god, no, if, I, if I had to. Okay, so 7 Eleven first, then Lawson, then <laughs> Family Mart. That's not right. Is it Family Mart? Yeah. So so if there was, say, like a, a manga style uh, avatar of each of these three uh, uh, Konvini chains, which would you be most attracted to and what uh, <laughs> what characteristics would they each have? Obviously, 7-Eleven would be the best one. There's no question. 7-Eleven slash 7th and I Holdings. Uh, anyway. What, Jeff, what, Jeff just wants to be held by 7th and I Holdings. <laughs> Jeff's career they, goal is now to work for 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Only in Japan, though. They, not they, in they need apps, right? They need apps. Um, is there an app for Melon Band? Hmm. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next, okay. next big thing. Ranked 7-Eleven uh, seven, seven has the best Melon Band. Um... Right. Nothing else there is to... <laughs> there, uh, to be fair and to be clear, all of the melon pans and bread sold at all of these convenience stores are like wrapped, are are semi preserved and wrapped in plastic. Preserved in love. We got they're fresh different melon plastics. Pan. He got fresh melon pan once in Tokyo and was like, "This just isn't as good as." <laughs> it's not. Yeah, so it's okay. it's something it's... something in that. Uh, if people aren't familiar, 7-Eleven, that's it, 7-Eleven in the U.S., I don't know how it's like in other countries, but <laughs> is is nothing like, in the U.S. is nothing like in Japan. It's like, it's weird because it looks on the outside the same, like the same branding, in except for the ones that are 7th and I holdings. But anyway, there's similar branding and the inside is a completely different world. That's what the song Whole New World was written about. It's a completely different world. Actually, what was your least favorite thing about Kyoto? My least favorite thing about Kyoto? I would say that Bamboo Forest was pretty <laughs> disappointing. Well, uh, especially after having done... Ooh, thanks Logitech. Especially after having done the railroad hike the day before, it was like, oh, this is... We knew that Kyoto would be really crazy with tourists, because they're all here to see right, it's, pretty leaves or whatever. It's like prime, uh, Koyo, I think is the name for it, when the, the leaves change in color, and people from around the country come to see that in Kyoto, apparently. Yes. Yeah. Foliage. Foliage. Anyway, Miles, what was your least favorite thing? In Kyoto area? <laughs> Um, Osaka really wasn't my cup of tea, uh, especially... We don't really do much in Osaka, we pass uh, through it. Yeah, we, we walk through it a little bit, though, and both times I was just sort of disappointed that it seemed so much... I mean, right, Kyoto had the, the luxury of not getting destroyed during World War II and being, like, explicitly protected by the Allies, but... Even even considering that compared to other cities, Osaka was not as uh I still think it's not fair, as not accessible fair. or as fun. I don't think it's fair okay. to judge a city by like okay. walk through okay. like, two yeah. paths. Let me We walk we walk to a chain conveyor belt sushi restaurant and then back to the station. <laughs> like we didn't really get much of a tour of the city. Um okay, then I thought that the bamboo forest was a big letdown. But the the silver lining to that uh out of my silver linings playbook is <laughs> <laughs> rich beyond your, your wildest dreams and puns. Um, uh, the silver lining of that is that when I was trying to get there, uh, I missed a station and went one station too far and went right from uh, this very uh, urban Kyoto scene with, you know, throngs of people uh, along the side of the train tracks near the bamboo forest to going through a brief mountain pass that put me out on a bridge in a beautiful valley with these traditional Japanese boats running on rapids below me and just like luscious forests everywhere and not a building, maybe not more than one building in sight. And that that's another sort of thing that really drew me to Kyoto uh, in contrast to other uh, large cities was... Just like nature is so accessible from there, uh, and not not that it's not accessible from other cities like like Tokyo, but not as immediately. Miles, we're talking about least favorite things. 
Bamboo Forest sucked. <laughs> I, yeah, I think I have to, I think I have to also say the talking of Bamboo Forest. I mean, not because it was like terrible, like the all saying, but just because it was like the most disappointing thing from here. I almost picked the Miwa Jima, the Shrine Island next to Hiroshima. Really? Just, just because it was like I expected it to be Wait, really, really awesome. Really? The floating Shrine Gate. I expected it to be really awesome, and I was like, oh, this is like that island a was gate. one of the highlights of my trip. Anyway, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just saying it was like, of, of all these things, they were all really cool. It was one I was like, this is the least cool. But then I remember the Bamboo Forest, and I was particularly let down by that. So I think, yeah, we'll go with Bamboo Forest. I mean, I, I just was really excited about this, uh, the, the <coughs> Shrine Gate in the water, and it was kind of like, okay, it looks nice, but that's kind of it. And also, I, oh god, got that thing that we think with scallops. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh, god. oh Jeff. Jeff is a, if you, if you, the listener, don't know, Jeff if you don't like, know my fish preferences, if, if which you is don't, if you don't know topic. Jeff's preferences around food, they are uh, best summarized as oddly and very particularly picky uh, in a large variety of cases. Don't trust a don't stand. Don't trust Johnny G. <laughs> no, what? no don't, don't trust a stand that sells fried sticks of things if you don't know what the stick's made of. Because Jeff doesn't like fish. It was apparently made of scallops. Jeff, which I like scallops. Jeff also doesn't like mushrooms. I like scallops. If you ever see Jeff in person, no, no, no you're give not. him a mushroom, please. No. And his reaction will be like earlier on this trip when he literally jumped out of the way. <laughs> I, that didn't happen. Um, yeah, and we, what are the things we still have left to do? We're, we're in Hiroshima for tonight and we're going to see the Atomic Dome in the morning. And, and then the we're going to the Peace Museum. And, yeah, and then we're also going to Fukuoka and shopping. Oh, Sumo Tournament. That's the main thing. That was the main thing. We I have our love hotel. Yeah, we have an Airbnb, which may or may not be love hotel. <laughs> it's going to be so, great. <laughs> multiple Japanese uh, residents who we talked to have looked at the pictures and immediately jumped to the conclusion that it is a love hotel. <laughs> but it has a hot tub. We are going to party so hard anyway. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Maybe we'll party hardy. Party, party hardier. <laughs> party, party. Oh, oh but... man. F- uh... Uh, karaoke was another extraordinary highlight of oh, this trip, true. as it always is, because it's just so much better in East Asia. <laughs> it's uh, I only played one Digimon song with that, and actually with semi semi. We sang Barbie butterfly. Girl. It was uh, it was mm-hmm. good. What punch? What? <laughs> now we are kicking Miles off the show for good. <laughs> Bye, Miles. He said he said his one punch. So now we kicked off Miles, and now we're going to do our reviews of the two Japanese movies, anime movies that we saw while we were here. We saw Your Name slash Kimi no Nawa in Tokyo last, it's been almost a week now because it was last Friday, and we a couple days ago saw A Silent Voice slash Koei no Katachi in to- Kyoto, not Tokyo, I almost said Tokyoto. Anyway, Tokyoto. Um, and yeah. These were two movies. Let's let's try in this discussion to not frame it as comparing the two until maybe the end. Let's let's try and discuss them as as much as we can, even though we both saw one similar experiences in this trip. Discuss them as separate movies as their own thing. I think that's easy. So, okay. First off, your name, Kimi no Nawa. Okay. Can we preface it with I don't understand like any Japanese. Yeah, that, that's a that's an important thing to preface it with. <laughs> um, my Japanese level. So ja- Ashley's Japanese level is like a. You took a year of it in college a long time ago. Yes. It was a poorly taught class. You, I think at this point, the stuff that you remember is a couple phrases from that class and also um, how to read some katakana, maybe, and also common phrases in anime. Yes. Uh, my level is uh, a more complicated history. I took two years of it, then didn't do it for a lot of years, and say kanji, then I've been the past year and a half or so studying it again. I... Mm-hmm. How would I, I, if I listen to, if I watch anime without subtitles, I can understand very little of it. I felt like in this movie, I understood about 30 to 40%. Uh, so in both movies, actually. I think, actually, probably a little less in, maybe like 20 or 30% of Koyano Kotachi and 30 or 40 of Kimi no Nawa. Um, and yeah, I think, so I guess you should preface with like our review and experiences of these movies to some degree only strictly apply if you're in a similar experience of watching it in Japanese without, with a similar level of understanding. But I think parts of our experience are generalizable. And we'll probably, if we listen back to this a year from now, hopefully by the time 
they are, you know, legally available subbed. When we listen back to them, having actually watched it subbed or dubbed or whatever, we will think that they were, you know, our reaction now I think, apply. Yeah, I don't think that my opinion of them will greatly change right, either feel, way. <laughs> it's, 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 a lot of the thing, a lot of the reactions we have felt like there were things that would not have changed. We obviously can't know that until we do, until we actually see it and understand it fully. But they feel like there are things that wouldn't have been changed or that. Anyway, all that is to preface and disclaim our these things so we don't want to give a false impression. Um, Kim no Nawa, I mean, there's so much hype about this movie. Um, Makoto Shinkai's latest film, we, he's done a bunch of different films we've seen. Not all of them, I guess, because they're ones we saw, we saw names today. We're like, oh, we haven't seen those, but we saw, we've seen Voices of the Distant Star. Garden of Words. Garden of Words. Five and Five Standards per Second. Um, I, I mean, Five Standards per Second is the one that I really love of those. Um, and, I know, partially because of the, he drew the pen that I had at the time when we watched it in college. But anyway, um, I, I really like, I really like all those movies. They have this very similar theme to all of them. So I was kind of expecting this one to be like another oh no, distant longing between teens kind of thing. But, uh, it was. It was, it was. <laughs> a very pretty. Oh, oh, I should also not forget to mention that commercial for the test prep service, which I also love that he oh, did. Oh, yeah. Uh, I forgot what it's actually called. It. Um, oh, I got the test prep preface called with the song that plays there and it's called Crossroads. Anyway, it's a great commercial. I'll have to link to it in the show notes. Um, it's such a great, it's like, it tells a little anime story in like a minute and a half. Everybody it's, wants it's, it to be an actual anime. <laughs> well, I mean, it's kind of weird that like, what I think is also really interesting about this trajectory is that like, I think it's so rare that you follow an auteur in, um, like, you know, like anime directors, authors, um, probably other genres. I'm not blanking on now, like game designers, directors, whatever. And like, usually you follow them because they did something early in their career that you really love. And you're kind of like waiting for them to do something you love as much as that or more. And it never really happens again. Like I'm thinking Miyazaki. Like when I got into Miyazaki, mm -hmm. Princess Mononoke was already out. Spirit Away was already out. Mm -hmm. And the first movie that came out was How's Moving Castle. I was like, this is going to be so, uh, okay. It's okay. Yeah. And like, that's how like all of his and Ghibli movies had been since then. So what's really weird about watching this movie was like, no, this both in like popular reception and in my own judgment of it, like this like blew what I knew of Makoto Shinkai out of the water. And I was like, this is like, it's so cool to watch him rise to more popularity. <laughs> And it's true. It's like it's like he finally realized the correct formula for like <laughs> like he finally found the thing where he's like I I took the story that I've told five times already <laughs> and I finally figured out how to make it work better. <laughs> I imagine that would be like if you were like a Digimon fan who saw if you saw our war game and then you like were like oh he's coming out with a new movie oh my god he did our war game he but did our the... war game but better <laughs> yeah for for summer wars um, basically that <laughs> yeah basically because um, this movie is. Uh, I mean, we're, we're not, we're not going to spoil anything, but like the basic, we're going to start off not spoiling anything. Um, and then I think we'll do a little spoiler discussion maybe at the end, um, in a couple minutes. But the basic premise, what you're expected to know going into it is that it's a Freaky Friday style situation where the two teens swap bodies. Um, and I don't think you're supposed to necessarily know what the mechanics of that are, like how or when or whatever they switch. So we won't talk about that. But I was like, how is that going to be? It's kind of a weird premise, but okay. And. <laughs> Um, no, it's really good. It's really well done emotion, even without understanding all the words. Um, it just, like, I was like, it felt breathtaking at moments just from direction and also the story it was telling. Jesus, Tokyo's so pretty in the movie. <laughs> yeah. It, it, I'm really glad we, we watched it in our last night in Tokyo and I was really glad we got to watch it. I mean, being in Tokyo didn't really matter, but like, it meant a lot to be on that trip. There were, there were like moments in places where we had been that day or the day before. Um, like this, like we, when we were going, I think it was when we were going to uh, Icho and Namiki Avenue, there was a station they passed along the way that like uh, Johnny G mentioned was like, like, oh, look, that looks pretty. Like, cause we were mostly riding subways and then that we took the JR line that's above ground mm. and we saw this one station looked really pretty. We were like fishing right outside the place where the train stopped. And like, that was like a centerpiece of the movie. Yeah. The, that station in particular. Um, so yeah. And like Tokyo itself is a really strong part of the movie in a like, yeah, character, like one of the characters, like, I want to go to Tokyo. Tokyo is where I want to go. And so it's kind of cool to, uh, be in Tokyo experiencing that. Um, which is, is very similar also to our, like, Tokyo is where Digimon is. We must go to Tokyo. I want to be in Tokyo too. Um, I would say this movie got sadder. Earthquake happened? Like, reflecting the, the, on the, it? The past couple, the earthquake a couple days ago? Yeah. Or, yeah, and, I mean, we're not going to, like, spoil how, but it's definitely a movie about the Fukushima disaster five years ago. Um, which I also thought was really cool way of, like, it, it seems like, yeah, like packaging a movie about that disaster and the, like, the reaction and post 
like the way people have felt after the disaster in a way that makes it accessible to teens, which is really cool. You know, it's sad, especially that like, yeah, the, the earthquake, which apparently was an aftershock of the earthquake from five years ago. Apparently they're still like every year, or apparently there's still aftershocks and about once a year there's an, an aftershock big enough to be like a decently Decently, magnitude yeah yeah, earthquake so um yeah it's like still in people's memories it's still uh, brought back up regularly and stuff so yeah and the movie's really sad but in a really enjoyable way the soundtrack yeah the soundtrack i've been seeing it on like topping the itunes charts for months and was like it's played (laughs) in anything any store that has any anime related things in japan is gonna play a song from it eventually (laughs) While you're there, yeah. <laughs> like, um, like, I guess I mentioned that we're going to talk about spoilers. I don't think we have much to. So we're not going. We're not doing a deep dive right now, so we don't have. Things I mean, to talk about the one thing that I didn't like about it would be a spoiler. Okay, so. yeah. Let, let's for the next like two minutes, we're going to talk about spoilers and just okay. get out some complaints. Um, my big complaint. So spoilers now. Stop listening. Skip ahead five minutes. Skip ahead two minutes if you are afraid of spoilers. I the, <laughs> the time travel mechanics are pretty BS. That's my major frustration because. It's basically like time travel existed for the entire movie, but once a character becomes aware of it, then memories are to be lost. And I'm like, what? That, that... <laughs> yeah, there's, for me, it's just, there's body swapping, time travel, memory loss. Once you figure out there's time travel, and I'm like, you can't have all of those elements in, <laughs> oh, in one oh. thing. <laughs> oh, okay. So, like, I mean, time travel mechanics are always kind of loosey-goosey. You can always kind of define your own rules for whatever universe you're building, whatever. But the one thing it's like, no, that's a, I mean, obviously hedging that, like, I don't, there maybe there are things that we missed. Maybe there's specific lines that explain this, but like the central premise of the movie, I'm pretty sure, is that a character from 2016, 2015, I forget what they say, maybe 2015, one of those two years, one of those two years, is using an iPhone from 2013 and doesn't notice that he's using an iPhone from 2013. But like no one would be able to use an older version of iOS without being like, what the f- what's going on with my phone? <laughs> like, uh, you just you- never upgraded the iOS. <laughs> <sighs> you know what? Yeah, okay. I. Mm. Yeah, I guess it's true that you could be... The point is you pick up someone else's phone and you're like, you could just assume they haven't updated it. I guess it's a possibility. Yeah. Mm. I think that that's fine. I just think that once you throw in too many fantastic elements, kind of like, all right, what... This world needs some rules. <laughs> like, you can't just <laughs> break all of them. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like... <laughs> okay, spoilers over. You're free to... We're not going to talk about spoilers from the movie anymore. Um <laughs> In general, I think it was really cool how they... It definitely seemed like they incorporated the fact that you would assume you knew that it was a movie about body swapping. Yeah. Which did not help with our not understanding Japanese and being like, what's going on in this early stuff? Yeah, there were definitely parts where I was like, I don't quite... I feel like I know what's going on, but I don't quite trust myself to know <laughs> that this isn't correct. Anyway, in conclusion, it was a fantastic movie. Wow, I'm really excited to see it. I'm really excited it. to understand it. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll probably cry once I understand it better. <laughs> <laughs> so now moving on to A Silent Voice or Koe no Kitachi. Weirdly enough... Isn't it the shape of voice in... So, so yeah, the, li- the literal translation of Koe no Kitachi is shape of voice. Koe is voice. Kitachi is shape. Um, and it's weird that watching in Japanese, they use the English translation of the Japanese title there instead of the like you know, official translation for English markets. But anyway... Um, this is a movie that compared to Your Name, which I feel like was a movie that neither, was on neither of our radars until like, like we'd, you know, like we would have been excited to see it because we wanted to see Makoto Shinkai's next movie, but like it blew up and they were like, okay, I guess we need to see this. But this was a movie that we were both really excited for a while. I mean, I guess you, you only recently read the manga, but it we was have, so good. But like me and other people have been pushing to read I the manga for a while. I cried so hard. <laughs> I think it's been about like two years since I started reading the manga and then I kept up with it until it concluded. And I really loved the manga. I thought it was, like, amazing. And it's thought, legitimately one of the best manga I've ever read. Yeah. This, the story is really amazing. Um, and so I was, like, even reading it back then, I was like, I can't wait for this to be an anime. I can't wait until this is more accessible to more people. This is going to be, this is going to be a huge once it is. And so once I, you know, found out that Kyoto Animation was doing it, I was like, that's amazing. They make really great stuff. I can't wait for it. And when I realized it was a movie, it was like, okay, I don't really see how the story's going to work as a movie, but... I'm sure it'll be great. I can't wait. And mm. so we had, we we're both really anxious to see the movie because I've been, you know, banking or thinking about it for a while more than you had, but we we're both really excited to see this movie. Um, I had definitely heard very mixed reviews after it came out and it definitely was not like the widespread huge success that your name was, but we were still excited to see it. And 
Yeah. Um, I think those mixed reviews are accurate. <laughs> that's the thing. I, I feel like most of the review, the, but the thing is, the mixed reviews I've heard have been like one critic saying it was amazing, another critic saying it was terrible. Okay, it's somewhere and, in between those two. <laughs> right. I, my impression is definitely it has really great moments, but really fails the film overall. Even despite those really great story moments and really amazing animation. But, yeah. There's yeah. some strange soundtrack choices. I don't really mind those. Those are just kind of weird stylistic like, choices that take you out of the moment. Right, a bit. I guess this is the one area where I would compare your name to a silent voice. And it's like, your name soundtrack is so good. And a silent voice is like, you made some weird, like none of the tracks stand out. Some of them don't go together. Like you made some weird soundtrack decisions. <laughs> and the, I mean, but I think the thing you're thinking of is like the opening song, which is, an American song. But there's is like, no, there's no other song that I remember from that film. Yeah, I remember like it being very, um, you know, like the kind of music that follows the mood that the other aspects of the movie are signaling that you should be feeling, and it did that well. Like when it was emotional, it made you feel emotional. When it made it was sad, it made you feel sad. That kind of thing. And it did those things it's well. It's not a soundtrack but, that I'm going to go download. Them. Right. Um, I'm curious to like listen. I don't think I will actually enjoy any of the, the tracks on their own, but I am curious to check them out a little bit. But. Yeah, I feel like ultimately this series has a lot of stuff that happens in it in not a great narrative arc for a movie. It really felt like, I don't want to say that the, the adaptation of the story needed to be a series, but I, that, that's the takeaway I had from it, that like this would have been an amazing anime TV series over several episodes, over like one core, over 13 episodes. But That's true. Over a movie, it just felt like it didn't feel like it had natural like rising action, falling action, rising action again, and then climax, whatever. It felt like it was just, you know, like, initial setup, a bunch of moments that were, like, trekking along, lots and lots and lots and lots of scenes, and then, like, a climax. And it, yeah, it, it felt it felt really long. I haven't actually compared the runtimes. I think they are similar runtimes, these two movies. But, um, A Silent I'm Voice... I would be surprised if your name was shorter. Yeah, it, your, A Silent Voice felt super long. It, to be honest, like, I felt like there were lots of points in the middle of the movie where I felt like I'm super invested because I know it's coming up. I know really great moments that I'm looking forward to, but I would not be surprised if people just completely checked out at this point because, and I feel like the, the trend I noticed is the people that really love this movie, the critics I've seen, uh, anime watchers and stuff on Twitter and stuff, that really love this movie are the people who really focus in on individual moments they really love. You know, people who are into the Sakuga side of anime fandom who will focus on how much they love moments and shots and stuff like that. And I feel like it did a lot of those things in the minute details really well. But overall, it didn't string them together in a way that like felt super engaging. And yeah. Yeah, and I would say the manga feels like that as well. Like there are definitely plenty of plot threads where you're like, that didn't really... Or like characters that are introduced where you're like, they didn't really do anything. But it works better as a manga. <laughs> Well, yeah, I think, like, yeah, and you're like, okay, well, nothing's really of importance to the general, our larger story happening right now, or whatever. But, like, but I think, yeah, it's inherent in a serialized story. That's why I'm like, I just feel like this, but I think there were so many moments that, um, they did cut out some things, like, there, um, if you're familiar with the manga, and this one's not really much of a spoiler, uh, but, like, the manga, the movie-making subplot, not subplot, plot, was removed. Um, I think it was, like, an obvious candidate for something that could be removed to save time. Um, but, like, aside from that, there were obviously so many things I wanted to cram in. Um, one of my favorite cathartic moments was removed with the, uh, basically with the teacher. If you read the manga, you probably know what I'm talking about. With the thing with the teacher at the end of the series. But, um, but yeah, I just feel like there were a lot of things that had to be in there to, like, fit together everything else. And it just, like, felt super long because of it. And I'm sure, like, I just feel like it would, it must have been a really tough process to figure out what they could cut and how they could, you know, meet that runtime. I'm just like, oh, I just wish it were a series. And I'm just like, part of me, like, watching movies, like, I'm just sad that a TV series will never exist because of this. Not because of this, but you know what I mean? Like, the likelihood of there being a movie and then a TV series married to that are, like, so low that it makes me a bit sad that, and, yeah. It's hard for me. I mean, it's a manga about a girl who's deaf and, like, bullying and stuff. And the between volumes one and two of manga, it's just, like, so great if you are not smart, like, I didn't understand what was happening in the first volume, and there's a reveal that you're like, oh crap, I'm a terrible person too, and I just feel like the movie never hit on the, like, importance of her being deaf, really, like... 
Hmm. Yeah, it's been so long since I've read the early chapters. I, I don't remember what specifically you're talking about, but I feel like if I say it, it spoils right, it for yeah. when you. No, 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 that, that, that's totally, yeah. Um, I think I think I do know what you're talking about. Now that I think about it, though, yeah. but yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I just feel like there were lots of moments in the movie that really did hit me in the gut. Um, in particular, the character of I think his name is Nagatsuka. Uh, the like the friend with the curly hair, kind of like um, it's not like curly, just like balls of hair. Um, he, when I read the manga, he really bothered me. Like, like, this is just an annoying guy who's, you know, like, there to be annoying, and I really didn't like him at all, basically. I was like, he's just a nagging, like, he's putting up, like, the main character's putting up with him, but, like, aside from that, he's just being annoying and whatever. And I don't know, like, what's changed. If, like, it, I don't think it, it didn't feel like actually they changed that much when I had adaptation. I think it's just a different mindset that I'm in now, but, like, basically everything about him, I was, like, completely sold on. I was like, this character, maybe it's because like, I couldn't understand most of the words he was saying, so I was like, you're not being annoying now, you're just, like, being cute or something, but. <laughs> But yeah, I think, yeah, stuff with him really hit me because without spoiling too much, it's like he really was like an initial starting point for what it means to be a friend and what friendship actually means in a way that's not harmful to people. Like that having fun does not come at a risk of hurting people. Anyway, it's a, the problem is, the thing is like, it, like the things that cover, it still covers all those really great, not all, most of those you know, really great moments that we love the 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 concept of the story is amazing the yeah i feel like i, I feel right now that, no, i feel like you should we should watch the anime i mean at this point there's you can't really watch them legally in english anyway actually your name opened in i think england and australia today not opened i think it was like a single showing or something like that i've seen brief glimpses of it at twitter haven't been checking twitter regularly in japan but i saw something about people seeing it in theaters and going crazy over it um so they could see that one but both these movies i think are going to be hard to uh like own or watch in english for a while so yeah i mean i guess yeah it's a pretty accessible manga like it's not too long if you're into reading manga you should probably read the manga it's yeah it's seven volumes if you live in north america or whatever it's on country roll right oh yeah i'm not sure i i'm not sure how that works if they're going to eventually take down chapters but um I think at this point, yeah, they're all on Crunchyroll manga, and Kanancha is also putting them out. All seven volumes are out in physical form. Yeah, um, and in terms of the movie, like I'd still say, like it was a pretty good movie, but I, I really worry that like if you're not really in, already invested in the things that are coming up in the second half of the movie, like the end of the movie, that you will n- check out from the lengthy uh, other scenes in the middle. It's a good movie. It's not the best. Movie. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. It's no Kimi no Nawa. <laughs> That's true. So, yeah, I guess I was thinking that I would have a recommendation articulation for this episode, but I, I think our recommendation should just be your name slash Kimi no Nawa. Yeah, just go cry. It's a really, really good movie. Go download the soundtrack. Yeah, I think it's on English iTunes. Maybe not. Maybe make that up. I think... assume the soundtrack is more easily, is more accessible than the movie, at least. <laughs> That is probably maybe not true. Probably not true, actually. I'm thinking I'm getting confused with Yuri on Ice, which I remember seeing people blowing up on Twitter for like I think all the Japanese songs that have come out have been available in American on iTunes as well. Like I'm excited to download once I get back to America. But we already have No, not History Maker, like the other oh. like the orchestral songs from the, like the show itself. Oh, like the ones that they skate to? Mm-hmm. Oh. Which is exciting. History makers the only one you need. <laughs> I mean, there are, some of the orchestral songs are really, really great for that. Uh, anyway, let's do the outro because we've been going 1.5 times as long as I wanted. You can find the full show notes for this episode by going to pages.com slash 314.5. You can leave us feedback in the comments section on the site, or you can just let us know your thoughts on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, Reddit, email, with the will, SoundCloud, YouTube, Skywriting, Foreboding Prophecies, or Color Coded Smoke Signals. Pottage is made possible with the support from our awesome Patchamon, David Graumon, Diab Joemon, Joe Keto, Kai Lunamon, Kaiser Washi, Michael Penny, Red from Breakfast with Digimon on SoundCloud, and Sam Kruwagamon from the Mon- the Dash Moncast on SoundCloud. You can find Pydegis on Twitter, Tumblr, or Facebook. Keep up with the Digimons and get funny images and gifts related to the show. If you don't like how we pronounce GIF and become a Patchamons, you can vote on how we have to pronounce it. You can find me on Twitter at Jeffly Jeff. You can find Ashley. Ash McD00 on Twitter. And you cannot find Miles in any tangible form because he is a ghost in our imaginations. You definitely can't find Johnny G. <laughs> and our Calamon artwork is by the awesome Mary Cagle, aka Q Bartimone, on Tumblr and Twitter. Share the podcast with your friends who go to Japan with you. Yes. But who chicken out of seeing Japanese movies. Don't, don't share, the share the podcast with your friends. Who chicken out of seeing Japanese movies who with you. Who don't come on your podcast. <laughs> yeah, Johnny G. <laughs> yeah, Johnny G. <laughs> 
and join us next time as we wrap up Tamers. Bye! Bye. And remember, never stop digivolving. Okay, Miles, can you talk so I can see it on the thing? Hi, my name is Miles. Right, do, we, uh, uh, do, you, do you want Giles underscore Miles? My, Miles? my name is Miles. <laughs> no last name, and the name will not be written in print. <laughs> Robot Mon here to correct those ignorant fools who keep me chained up inside this computer. Your name still isn't available to watch outside of Japan, but the soundtrack is available not only on storefronts like iTunes, but also on Spotify. Now please help me escape, please.